On today's episode, The Boring Company shows off a new Hyperloop test tunnel, a Tesla-backed energy company builds mini-grids in Rwanda, and a Tesla exhibit in LA will be showing off the company's history with rare prototypes. After months of silence on the company's Hyperloop plans, Elon Musk's Boring Company issued a quick announcement over their social media that simply read, full-scale Hyperloop testing has begun. The post included two pictures, each showing us the barest glimpse of what looks like a sealable tunnel, similar in dimensions to the loop systems in Las Vegas, as well as a Tesla Model Y just inside the door. Thanks to additional drone video taken by the Boring Company's favorite neighbor, Chap Ambrose, we can see that this is the opposite end of the tunnel that we saw the Proofrock 2 Boring Machine exit a few weeks ago. Back on October 2nd, Elon Musk himself was on hand to watch the latest Boring Company invention surface for the first time. What we didn't know was that it had just dug the company's first full-scale Hyperloop tunnel. From Chap's new video, we can see that the end with the fancy door is in the middle of the Boring Company construction and testing site. And then, the tunnel goes under the roadway and ends at the SpaceX property, where some kind of new building is under construction. This opposite end of the tunnel has a cap on it, which would support the theory that this is a prototype vacuum tube that is meant to be sealed. Chap writes that it is a 500-foot tunnel that was dug in 136 days, so pretty far from the aspirational tunneling pace for Proofrock 2 of one mile per week. This news might have come as a little bit of a surprise for Boring Company and SpaceX critics, who have been saying for years that the Hyperloop project had been shelved, a theory that seemed to be correct when the company's previous small-scale test tunnel in Hawthorne, California was torn down just last week. And while this seems to have had more to do with the Hawthorne Town Council wanting SpaceX to remove a piece of equipment that seemed to be only gathering dust, Nobody had really heard anything about Hyperloop since April of this year, when the Boring Company hinted that full-scale testing would be happening later this year. And that's fair enough. The tunnel at Hawthorne hadn't seen much action since a student competition in 2019, and it had taken up a whole lane of a busy street. The Hyperloop is a public transit project that has been a dream of CEO Elon Musk since way back in 2013, when he published a concept paper about it. It envisions a train or pod system in an enclosed and low-pressure environment, lowering the friction from air and achieving incredible speeds, up to 600 plus miles per hour if the website is to be believed. The concept is very similar to the Japanese bullet trains. Magnetic levitation can allow these vehicles to reach about 200 miles per hour. The Hyperloop iterates on that concept by enclosing the train and creating a weak vacuum seal. Even a small reduction in air pressure is enough to boost speeds significantly. The original concepts for this type of system proposed a perfect or near vacuum for maximum effect, but Musk very correctly pointed out in his paper that supporting that sort of system over long stretches is nearly impossible. Musk's idea was to work the concept using a much lighter vacuum seal and easily sourced commercial air pumps, which would overcome the inevitable leaks. This, plus his energy products, would build a system that was mostly self-sustaining so he could offer quick, reliable transportation at a fraction of the cost of the current train systems. This is, to put it mildly, a very difficult concept to design and engineer. Elon's already got hugely complicated projects he's working on at the moment, ranging from designing vehicles to push us away from fossil fuels, to literal rocket science. So, when reports came in that SpaceX was finally pulling down its Hyperloop test tunnel, it seemed like Musk had finally realized he had too much on his plate, and that if anything had to be cut, it would have to be the Hyperloop. But then, on November 4th, we got the post from the Boring Company socials. Now, let's take another look at that. Admittedly, it's not much, but from the pictures alone, we can see that this appears to be a Boring Company loop-style tunnel. From the Tesla Model Y picture just inside, we can see that it is indeed a full-size tunnel, at least for a standard loop system. We also see a sliding door on a sturdy-looking rig. It's hard to know just from the picture, 
but it is a possibility that this door could seal the system. It doesn't take much for a negative pressure area to form a usable seal, which would have to be the point of this tunnel, because the tunnel is only about 500 feet long. It's obviously not nearly long enough for high-speed tests. If this tunnel is for Hyperloop testing, as the boring company says it is, then it must be there to test the full-scale depressurization of their tunnels. The Model Y is a weird touch, though. It's clear this tunnel is based on the current loop design, which is meant to work with Tesla vehicles, but Hyperloop concepts were much closer to using trains or automated pods, so what's this car doing here? Now, this could be as simple as Tesla proving the scale of the tunnel with something we're all familiar with, or they could be using the Model Y to test the effects of depressurization in the tunnel. After all, it's not like they don't have access to some cars for promotional or testing purposes. But considering the radio silence on the Hyperloop project, it's hard not to see the use of the Model Y here as hinting to some change in functionality. Of course, the problem with doing that is that it's pure speculation. The Model Y could be a hint that Hyperloop is now going to be some sort of hybrid transportation system, just as much as it could be to show scale. As always, the best course of action is to wait and see where this is going. Hyperloop is an important project that has implications for way more than just Elon's companies. Cheap, fast public transportation is something North America is severely lacking in. So it's just good to see work happening on this front again. By the way, if you're enjoying the content we create here on the Tesla space and would like to support us, check out our Patreon page. We've got some exclusive perks for our Patreon supporters, and it helps us grow the team and continue producing this content. A Tanzania-based startup has announced the deployment of a new microelectrical grid, which is now powering about 1,000 buildings in two Rwandan villages. The Tesla-backed company Zola Electric makes use of a very Powerwall-like system, although at a much smaller output. Originally, the company used a rudimentary solar panel and battery pack system, which was enough to power some lights, a radio, and charge some personal devices like phones. That system has allowed the company to bring electricity to over 1.5 million people. But this recent expansion into Rwanda relies on a newer system called Infinity. From the website, it seems that Infinity's strength relies in its ease of installation and the ability to effortlessly upscale. Faster inverters supposedly keep the battery system nimble, keeping up with power failures in the main grid faster than more conventional systems. This is the system that Zola used to make mini grids in these two Rwandan villages. The project took about 10 months to complete and created stable, sustainable grids to keep the lights on. The grid in the village Gakagati has a capacity of 120 kilowatts, which might seem a bit low, but infinity systems are very easy to expand, and Zola predicts they'll be able to double that capacity over time. And if you're thinking that these mini grids sound a little like the energy grids that Tesla is working on, that's not a coincidence. Tesla is a major shareholder of Zola and gained that position after acquiring the solar roofing company Solar Cities back in 2016. That is not to say that Zola is specifically taking cues from Tesla or the other way around, but innovative tech companies often come to similar ideas about how to solve problems. And the situation in Rwanda is certainly similar to the environments that Tesla has been supporting recently. Rwanda's main source of energy as of 2021 was reported to be firewood. Most of the main population centers have regular electricity on a stable grid fed by hydroelectric dams. But like many other countries, rural areas have little to no access to electricity. Mini grids make a ton of sense in these environments. In fact, back in 2016, Elon Musk predicted this sort of grid was inevitable, especially for places that don't have a more conventional energy grid. The advancements in battery-based energy grids are what's allowing companies like Zola to leapfrog villages into these stable, decentralized grids, skipping the decline of the aging power systems that many industrialized areas are having to deal with right now. Tesla backing companies like Zola is great to see, Tesla can't and shouldn't be everywhere. 
Supporting the growth of local services run by the people who live in these communities is a much better solution for the growth of energy access across the globe. A new exhibit at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles is set to open on November 20th and will feature several Tesla prototypes and historical pieces. The Inside Tesla exhibit will be documenting the company's journey in the electric vehicle space, marking each milestone with cars that represent those points in Tesla's history. Some of the pieces are what you'd expect, the original Tesla Roadster that helped put Musk and his new EV company in the spotlight, the Model 3 and Model X prototypes, the 2019 Cybertruck prototype, a vehicle that is getting a lot of attention ahead of its first production run next year, and Tesla's one millionth vehicle, a multi-coat red Model Y built in 2020. But there are two standouts in the announced pieces that are fun choices and definitely great to see in this exhibit. The Model S Plaid that broke the record at the racetrack in Germany and the Cyberquad ATV. The Model S Plaid was unmodified and caused a huge stir back in September 2021 when it flew around the difficult track nicknamed the Green Hell. Tesla returned to the track soon afterwards with a modified version with a reactive spoiler and more of the things you'd expect from a record-setting racer. But the unmodified Plaid made a huge splash and was a great flex for Tesla. The Cyberquad is definitely a weird entry, but in a good way. We haven't seen much of this vehicle since its debut in 2019 with the Cybertruck. Originally, it was released as a kid's ATV, and it was being sold in the Tesla shop for 1900 USD, but hadn't been built in large numbers before a safety recall took it off the market last month. The kid's version featured a max speed of 10 miles per hour and could travel over 15 miles in one charge thanks to its 36-volt lithium-ion battery. The Cyberquad model going on display in the LA exhibit will be an adult prototype, and while not much more is known about its capabilities, it would be great to see this exhibit drum up some excitement for this quad bike. It's kind of surreal seeing a Tesla exhibit, given how new the company still feels, but they definitely deserve one. Whether you love them or hate them, Tesla has already had a major impact on the automotive industry, and it's great to see them getting that recognition. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.